So today's agenda, uh, we're going to first introduce uh, the panelists here. Uh, we're then going to move to a discussion regarding uh, ChatGTP in action, um, how we use it before moving forward to a Q&A session. So today's panelists joining us, I'm going to start actually from right to left, uh, is Oscar Ortega. Oscar is with uh, TechSoup Mexico, our partner, uh, Semafi. Uh, he is an IT services coordinator. Also joining me is uh, Lashika Phillips, our director of equality, our equity, inclusion, diversity, and culture here at TechSoup. And then there is myself. I am again, senior technical customer success manager here at TechSoup. Uh, and do not sure Felipe is was able to get on with us. Felipe is here. here. Okay, great. And then Felipe Reyes, he is our uh, director of customer uh, development, and he is going to be first up uh, to uh, speaking with you uh, today. So with that, I'm going to pass it on over to you, Felipe. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, 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 AI and uh, ChatGPT, uh, you know, are, are very popular these days. It's uh, an emerging technology. I think uh, ChatGPT just launched in uh, November, and so this is still early days. And there's a lot of different things that you can do. I uh, just want to share my personal experience uh, on how I'm using uh, ChatGPT. Um, I, uh, I I use it for uh, for copy, and so copy writing. Uh, I use it for Excel formulas and also for some uh, mid journey prompts. And I'll go in a little bit of detail on each. Uh, the first one is copy editing. Uh, and so uh, ChatGPT can create copy for you. You can say, write me an email, uh, which is which is great. Uh, but I found that uh, for me personally, I, it, it works better as a copy editor because I'm able to put my thoughts across in whether it's an email uh, or uh, a document of some sort. And I put my, my thoughts together and then uh, ChatGPT acts as a copy editor, so I put it, uh, put my copy in there, and I, I, I ask it to, uh, to you know, write this in a more concise way. You know, maybe reference some things. Uh, you know, maybe format it in a certain way, uh, and it does a really, really good job. Um, I've, uh, I, uh, in, a, in, a, in a previous life, um, I always had a challenge with, uh, with some of the copy for our marketing materials, uh, to where we would use uh, at another nonprofit where I work. Uh, we would, uh, you know, use these third-party copywriters, uh, and so I would write my uh, my ticket for marketing, let them know what I wanted to uh, to promote, uh, answer some questions, and then send it through. And then I'd get the copy, <clears throat> and uh, the copywriter would kind of miss the mark. And so I'd go and I'd say, uh, you know, it, it, uh, can you you know modify it a little bit and add some more notes? And they come back, and, and still it wouldn't quite be there. And uh, and then marketing would be like, well, they're a contractor, and so. You only get one edit and then you have to go through. So I, a lot of times I had to just move forward with the copy that I had, even though I wasn't really enamored with it uh, until a friend of mine who worked in advertising said, uh, the copywriters write uh, the copy from the ground up uh, because they want to take credit for it. She goes, what you need is a copy editor it is different than a copywriter. And so then I asked marketing for a copy editor. They brought a copy editor. And lo and behold, that person made my, my uh, things better. Uh, and so that's what I needed. Uh, and so ChatGPT, I think, works really well as a copy editor. I write my my co copy, my content, uh, and it makes it better. I prompt it to to uh, write it in a certain way. Uh, and so that's that's a, a great way of using it. I also use it for Excel formulas. Uh, and so I um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, spent about forty five minutes trying to find a formula for Excel to do something. And I just I kept going through uh, Google, searching different ways, and then it occurred to me, I'm like, why don't I just use you know, chat GPT. And so I did, I wrote it in there and said, uh, write a formula in Excel to do X, Y, and Z, the things I wanted to do. And within seconds, it wrote it, I copied it, pasted it into Excel, and it worked perfectly. And so I wasted uh, all that time in search trying to find the right formula where chat GPT can, you know, write the formula for you. And so that was, that was great. Um, and then finally, uh, I, I'm currently using it for mid-journey prompts. And so uh, mid-journey is also AI, but it's AI for uh, graphics and images, whereas ChatGPT is uh, a language model. Um, uh, Midjourney is uh, for visuals, for for doing illustrations and photographs and things like that. I'm uh, relatively new to the uh, Midjourney, uh, 
but uh, and it, it's uh, the graphic user interface isn't exactly uh, all that easy to uh, to navigate. But if you stick with it, it's a really good way of getting uh, some images that you might be able to use in your marketing. Um, and so, uh, you know, you also have to prompt it. And so you do uh, forward slash imagine space and then the prompt. Uh, and so you can go and prompt it and you can see what others are prompting. But you can also go to uh, uh, to uh, chat GPT and say, you know, write me a prompt for mid journey uh, that, uh, you know, has, you know, you know, whatever, and then describe the image that you want. And so chat GPT in conjunction with mid journey can really kind of help. Uh, so we have a, uh, uh, a Quick little poll up here if you'd be interested in uh, a webinar on AI for images. Uh, and so Mid Journey is one of many, uh, but I know that when it comes to uh, you know uh, your marketing, your your services or your products or whatever it is that you're doing at your nonprofit, uh, sometimes it's difficult to find effective uh, images that kind of uh, uh, portray what it is that you do. And sometimes it can be expensive too. You go to iStock or you go to Getty Images, then get pricey. Uh, and you can get it uh, much cheaper and, and very focused on, uh, you know, using AI for images. And so it looks like, um, yes, a good percentage of folks do want to learn that. So not about 92% want to learn that. So we will work with our uh, our team at our end and maybe do something similar uh, to, uh, you know, to this uh, webinar. Uh, and then finally, uh, the one insight that I have on ChatGPT uh, is that you? Um, anybody that has a theater background might understand this. Is ChatGPT in my mind is a method actor, and so you have to give it its motivation. And so when you're having it write copy, you can say you are a copywriter at BBDO, which is a big marketing agency. You've won numerous awards and you know all these different things, and now it gets into character, and it'll go and it will write copy for you. Or you know you can say you know you are a uh, financial analyst, and uh, you. Uh, have you know uh, this uh, you know this thing that you want to accomplish, and so you give it its uh, its prompt by telling it what you are. Otherwise, it'll just you know do, give you something that's good, uh, but it'll give you something that's better when you kind of give it its backstory and say this is who you are. You are Ernest Hemingway, and you're going to write X, you know, and so uh, that might be uh, a way of going about it. So I'll stop there. Uh, I hope I stayed within my time, Kevin. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Felipe. Um, really glad we put the poll in there. Um, that was not quite the response I was expecting. Ninety-two percent is uh, is pretty uh, is pretty impressive, and we'll definitely have to circle back on getting that into a session, a webinar session later in the year. Again, hello for everybody that that didn't um, hear my introduction. Again, my name is Kevin Mahal. I'm a senior technical customer success manager here at TechSoup. What I'll be speaking on today is how I interact with ChatGTP and my role as a technology professional. Um, I'd like to first preface um, about the platform in itself. This is a free service, but there is a paid version of it. It's called ChatGTP GPT Plus. I pay for it. I think it's twenty dollars a month, but I am probably in a slightly different category as some of those attending. I'm a heavy user of the platform and high availability of the service is an absolute must for me. If I were to provide uh, a sentence to summarize my use of the platform, it would be for the experimentation and testing of different software solutions and to a lesser degree hardware in order to better understand the features and functions of the tools used by our customers at TechSoup, along with a little bit of dabbling into other emerging technologies such as zero trust networking. Breaking down that the role chat GPT plays in the functional areas where I use it specifically, and quite frankly, see value for it in nonprofits, uh, include some of the following, uh, which you can see illustrated uh, in part in this slide. Uh, the first is understanding features, functions, and requirements of software tools. You've probably reached out to us to ask us a question about uh, the software that you requested. This is actually, believe it or not, a good way to have a conversation with a very powerful AI tool before even, say, engaging with us. So an example, you're a system administrator with XYZ Nonprofit, and you recently purchased a new server rack for your on-premises environment. You plan to run Windows Server 2022 using core-based licensing model. The first question that may come to mind, and again, this is one I get very often, is how many licenses do I need? You can search the web. 
There happens to be uh, actually a great licensing calculator tool that HPE has on their website. But if that doesn't come up as a first page result, which it didn't for me, it was like the third or fourth page, it was hard to find. Um, you're going to basically run into a bunch of technical documentation um, with an answer somewhere within the thousands of words that you're going to be reading, um, providing you a bunch of information that'll either be confusing or you don't necessarily need to know. Well, this is a scenario where you could, in fact, put to the platform and get directly, get answered directly within seconds. I've personally used this across several of the product offers in our catalog to gain better insight into how an addition uh, of or a version on our site may differ from even, say, an alternate product. Um, because you'll notice that there are things like, for example, Zoom, which are on, there's a professional and business edition. Um, so within our own catalog, as well as even some products that people have come to me that are not available in the TechSoup catalog, but they want to find something that is similar to what we offer uh, as far as the product and then the pricing. Second way that I interact with GPT, technical troubleshooting. I, my wish earlier to Aretha's uh, question before we started is what would you want? More brain power. I, if I could be anybody, I'd wanna be Tony Stark. So to me, I rely on this heavily for breaking down uh, technological questions that I may not even have a strong understanding of. So not pictured on this slide, but one that comes immediately to mind because I've answered it on a regular basis is surrounding voice app, voice internet protocol, connectivity, and call quality issues. For someone that's using something like Microsoft Teams phone or Ring Central that doesn't have a background in telecommunication solutions, this can be a little daunting. Questions like, do I have the right port open? How would I test the network for a distributed team, et cetera? Sure, this is something you could take to a standard search engine, and I definitely recommend that you do. But consider running your query or question against chat GPT first to give you a baseline understanding of how you would remediate the potential problem and see if and how any technical documentation lines up with this. Um, this would obviously carry also over to a variety of products and services from Microsoft to even QuickBooks, where I was actually able to track down how donations are recorded in QuickBooks Online. Third would be enhancing coding efficiency and website content delivery. These both these last two are kind of may or may not apply to you, and they're some very high level technical stuff. But at least understanding that GPT has this capability is important. Are you in a position where you're, say, working with a web developer on a shoestring budget, or attempting to do some custom coding on this on your site by yourself? For those organizations where this is a reality, which there are, I'm sure, many here today. Uh, there's an opportunity within chat GPT for both growing and learning. In the example on the slide that you see here, I asked chat GPT to write a blog article in HTML, and then I tested the code in an emulator at the W3 website to see what it would look like. This is, of course, a very rudimentary example. A website contains HTML, CSS, other elements, JavaScript, but the, the purpose of understanding this is, is that you can learn the basic fundamentals of what goes into something like this. And then once you advance in your ability to use standard or, or chain prompting, um, which I'm not gonna talk about in this case, but it is something to look up, um, you can ultimately scale this service to, to really return some very uh, incredible things back to you. And the last part, and I just really wanna speak at this at a very, very, like skimmed down version uh, is building and designing custom applications. For those that may be joining us that are actual developers that work in DevOps or you know, are even interested in say low code, no code environments. Um, where this kind of could tie in is something like, for example, chat GPT access tokens. So chat GPT, you have the ability to communicate your coding repos or repositories within ChatGPT. That can also map to something called GitHub. Um, if you don't know what any of these terms are, it's okay. Um, that might not be your purview, but for those that um, this is, just know that you can use these tools together to ultimately begin building, developing, and troubleshooting applications uh, that your work, custom applications that you're working on. So that's it uh, in a nutshell, um, a, a bit to take in. Um, 
but hopefully this shows you the capabilities that this has from a technical perspective. And with that, I am going to pass it over to Lashika. Hi, thank you, thank you, Kevin. Oh, wow. So for those who uh, did not get the intro, my name is Lashika Phillips, and I am the Director of Equity, Inclusion, Diversity, and Culture here at TechSoup. And so I uh, have the opportunity to help lead uh, a lot of the diversity, um, inclusion, and equity initiatives across the organization, and even also with the nonprofits that we serve. So I'm super excited to be here to talk to you about how I am currently using ChatGPT. So I'm only going to cover uh, four key ways that I'm using it, and, um, and I'll share some examples here. And then I will end off with just a couple of things that I would say, I don't know, my takeaways um, with using ChatGPT and other AI, if, if I can. So one of the first uh, key ways that I'm using ChatGPT for my work is efficient email communication. I know that Felipe already covered it, and I love how he um, showed the difference copy editor versus uh, copywriter, right? And I love the idea of already having my concepts and my idea, my content ready and asking ChatGPT to perfect it. But for in my work, I take it just a little step further. And so for me, what I like to do is I like to take maybe my email response um, and put it in ChatGPT and ask it, hey, perfect this, removing any instance of bias or make, make, this, make this email um, more uh, empathetic. And sometimes I will ask ChatGPT to give me su suggestions as opposed to just rewriting it for me. So for instance, an example would be, you know, give me five ways to make this uh, email response uh, more empathetic, right? So that's one way that I'm using it. And I have provided a prompt. And I do believe, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, here though, but we will share this slide out with everyone. And so you'll see the exact prompt um, that I use for that. And feel free to tweak that, you know, make it your own. Um, but again, this is how this is how I'm I'm using um, using it for my email communication. Uh, additionally, I really am loving using ChatGPT uh, for streamlined meeting summaries. Uh, now, one thing you have to be aware of with ChatGPT, whether you're using um, the 3.5 or the 4 version, um, there is a character limit. So depending on the length of the meeting or the length of a transcription that you have, you may have to divide it into two parts. Um, but it's, it's ChatGPT is helping me summarize meeting um, discussions by extracting key points as well as action items. And um, I have it to generate all of those in a table for me. All of this happened trial and error. Uh, at first, when I first started using ChatGPT to create meeting summaries, uh, I would just say, hey, take this transcript, um, extract certain information, and give me all of the action items, right? And I had to I had to refine that because it did. It generated all of the action items, but it was just like one long um, list of, of action items. And so I was able to really work that and reimagine that. And so now a better approach and better prompt is to ask ChatGPT to put that in a table. And so this is one way that you can use for your, your meetings that you're having with volunteers or with staff. And you can um, just take your meeting transcript, copy and paste that into ChatGPT. I, I want to mention, though, that uh, it is important um, to extract. You can extract individuals' names. That's that's how I typically use um, ChatGPT to get my meeting summaries. And then again, um, another thing to point out here is have it to put it in a table for you. It will certainly make identifying action items um, and any departments that are assigned to those action items, it's easier to see. And you can have ChatGPT to put that in a table for you. And again, we'll share the slides out and you can see the uh, exact prompt that I've used there in the past. 
um, of also amusing ChatGPT for uh, creative brainstorming. So I'm I'm leveraging its idea generation capability to help um, brainstorm initiatives uh, aligned with the missions, uh, the mission here at TechSoup and our needs. So uh, I'll give you a really quick example that um, we used recently. So we have an affinity group at TechSoup uh, for Black people in tech or Black people at TechSoup, um, Black identifying folks, right, within the organization. And for a while, we struggled with what, what name should it be? Um, we weren't really sure. We just happened to be in a meeting one day. And I said, you know, maybe let's put it in chat GPT and let's see what happens. And it did. It generated. We asked it to generate 10 um, unique names and um, the name that it generated for this one particular affinity group was Tech Soul, S-O-U-L. And so we took it a step further and we we said, well, we really want soul to mean something, right? And so we asked ChatGPT to generate it was like 10 or 20 ideas for an acronym. And so we were able to then choose between um, several different responses to get the name of that initiative. So again, another ideas, another ways that you can incorporate using ChatGPT as you are thinking and brainstorming ways for various nonprofit campaigns or how to engage volunteers um, and even among your staff. So that's just one, uh, one way to do that. And last but not least, I want to mention that uh, I have been using it, I have used it in the past for data uh, analysis and insights. So I have used it to analyze sexual data, like feedback and survey responses to help identify trends and sentiments in some ways. And so I've been able to um, just take, take some um, responses, put it in ChatGPT and ask it to uh, identify, you know, some key, uh, some key points here, some key trends, along with any kind of action steps that were that were in that feedback. And then again, using that prompt to put it in a table for me, it allows us to really be able to identify um, trends, notes, action steps in that way. And again, I have a, a prompt that we will share um, later with you that you can uh, try or use, you know, make it your own. Um, but I want to leave you with this. When using ChatGPT, it's, it's very important, number one, to be responsible with data, right? So just be aware of that, that the information that you are putting into ChatGPT, there are creative ways that you can do that without sharing or, or putting in um, IP or intellectual property and sensitive information. So just keep that in mind. Um, my second point to you is have fun. There are so many ways that people are using ChatGPT and uh, it can be a lot of fun. I also want to uh, share with you to keep a list of your successful prompts. There's nothing like finding a prompt that really works for you and you have something to go back to. Even though ChatGPT, it will keep track of the prompts that you use, I would not always rely on that <laughs> because I can recall some days when I have tried to find a prompt and it was not there. So keep a track, keep track of that for yourself. Keep, create a separate document. And last but not least, share with others. I have been amazed every time I let someone know how I'm using ChatGPT at work, and then I'm always learning how they're using it, and then I'm also getting tips. Um, so you know, for my use as well. So uh, thank you so much, Kevin, for uh, allowing me to sh share how I'm using it, and um, forwarding it on to the next panelist. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So. I have been reading the different comments for, uh, from the session. There are cybersecurity concerns. People would like to have uh, examples of different prompts. Um, there are questions around like ChatGPT only has uh, information until 2021. What happens with the last year and maybe the months on this? So we will try to figure out all those questions. So be a little patient. And let me start with uh, thinking about our daily 
job as nonprofits. One way you can use uh, ChatGPT could be for looking for grants and donors. And it, it doesn't matter that the information uh, finished or the training information finished on 2021 because we have enough information to maybe to find a list of donors, a list of a, a, a call for nominations for grants, nominations for awards uh, related with our job. And it's very possible that if we have an award that it's maybe for gender equity, that it's the area that we are working, and it has been happening since 2018, it's very possible that we can look for that using ChatGPT to identify and then moving, moving to Google to check if it's open for this year. So don't worry if it has some uh, difference in the timing. You need to think about ChatGPT as an important tool, uh, but just as that, it is a tool. It won't solve all the problems. It will just help us. So first, looking grants and donors. Um, I know maybe uh, it's not easy to read because the letter is very, very small, but my prompt was, please act as a fundraising expert in a nonprofit organization. And please list me 10 potential companies or foundations uh, that could provide support to gender equity projects in Mexico, because I'm living in Mexico. And it's pretty interesting that the answer was, as an AI language model, I can provide you a list of organizations that have previously supported gender equity projects in Mexico. And I want to highlight this because it says that in the past they have supported. So it's very possible that if they supported in the past, I can contact them to support me today or maybe for, for a project in the future. And the answer was uh, the list of 10 companies. It starts with the Ford Foundation Company, the Open Society, Global Fund for Women, and the other organizations. So sometimes when I am talking with a lot of nonprofits, they say, oh, I can never find potential donors. So look it as an option because my next question is, okay, the first foundation can provide a, a grant on gender equity, but how can I find that the information? You can still using chat GPT or then you can move just to Google. Please Google what is the picture of the Ford Foundation? And you can find the website of the Ford Foundation and start reading. If I can't find information, maybe you can use the Bing uh, that is now connected with ChatGPT and then ask, please, Bing or ChatGPT in Bing, please tell me if the Ford Foundation has now an open grant request for gender equity. And it will start looking in the information uh, around internet using the last articles uh, and news that have been published, visiting the website, and maybe it can come back with. Now they have an open um, request for projects, and this is the website. So consider using also other, other tools. Other great way to use uh, ChatGPT it could be for project justification. Uh, sometimes when you read the, the requests uh, for, the call for request for funding and you have to submit a project, you need to have an appropriate justification. So again, now you can prompt, uh, I am applying for a fund, uh, for a fund, uh, for nonprofits on gender equity. I need to highlight how uh, working on gender equity can help on economic development in a country like Mexico. And with that information, uh, ChatGPT can help you gathering data, putting different points, and, and that's it. So start using as part of it. And let me use an example that I use in a personal way uh, the last month. I discovered um, a government um, open for proposals. And 
I discovered on April 13th and the project or the deadline to submit projects was April. Uh, I, I discovered on 13 and it was on April 14th. So I just had one day to get ideas on how to work on data protection, personal data protection. Also have the enough information to justify why I would like to work on data protection. And I asked ChatGPT, ChatGPT, give me a justification of why work in, in uh, data protection at Ciudad Juarez in Mexico in no more than 500 words. And it gave me a great justification. Then give me ideas on how to work to provide or to create awareness or trainings on data protection. And it gave me the ideas for my project. I used that information and I submitted my proposal uh, in less than 24 hours. And I have some news, at least uh, the proposal was accepted in the first phase. Now we are submitting other information, but just take the advantage of this, uh, of this kind of information. Can we move to the next slide, please? I have two more, uh, two additional ideas. Other is just to get facts or statistics. Like, uh, for example, I asked, please give me statistics on cybersecurity in Mexico. That is a topic that I used to talk a lot. So it started giving me some information like, for example, the first cybercrime rates. Mexico has experienced a rise of uh, cybercrime rates in recent years, according to a report of by the Mexican Banking Association, cyber attacks against financial institutions increased 82% in 2020 compared to the previous year. So also use it to get some facts that could help you to support the idea of your mission and your causes. And the final thing, it could also work great for awards nomination. And see the example, please write a justification of why Oscar Raul Ortega Pacheco, in this case, that's my name, should be awarded in social responsibility because of his work on cyber security. And I, when I put my name, I was not expecting to have an, an answer or, or something accurate, but it, it looked around the internet and there was some information uh, about me in the cybersecurity area. And it's and it first it said why is important cybersecurity, and then it explained how Oscar has contributed to the cybersecurity environment. So that could also help you to nominate your nonprofit, maybe your CEO, your founders, and others. Please move to the last uh, slide, please. We're on the next one. So there are no limits. The, the limits to use and how to use it will be your imagination. For marketing, you can use for emailing uh, your, uh, your database and use an, a specific language to persuade people to take connection and ask, please chat GPT, give me a persuasive uh, subject for an email for donation. Um, also for creating images, um, for planning your social networking calendar, as Kevin said, for IT support. So you can get suggestions at any topic for your organizations or how to deal in a situation for beneficiaries. Imagine you provide some kind of psychological support and you have experts, but now you have a special situation. You can ask also ChatGPT, ChatGPT, how can I deal with a breakup so ChatGPT will give you some suggestions that you can read, and if they are appropriate, maybe you can use it to suggest that for your beneficiaries. And there are the cybersecurity risks that someone asks. First, never, never, and again, never share personal or confidential data because ChatGPT gets our information and uses for an answer, but also stores to continue training the model. So if you add personal information or confidential data, if someone asks something similar, maybe it can use information we provided as an input. So that's that will be the first thing. Second, uh, 
uh, there are some, uh, when you ask, for example, chat GPT to write an article for a blog, some of the search machines are identifying that the content has been generated by chat GPT. And if they identify that, they are not indexing the content of the article. So once you ask chat GPT to write you an article, an award justification, an email, anything, please check it by yourself, update the information or use another AI system to correct the automated responses so you can continue be indexed in the uh, different areas. Um, someone else said, please save the questions, the prompts that you are using so you can uh, reuse in the future and you have better options to, uh, to continue. So with that, let's move with the next one. Thank you, Oscar. Um, just a bunch of great points that were brought up in there, um, especially around privacy, security, um, the way that you structure um, your queries, uh, et cetera. These are all important things. Um, there's quite a few questions that have come in, so I, I really don't want to hesitate a, a whole lot longer, and I want to start to get into these so that we can cover all of these, um, and hopefully they'll answer questions that some of you uh, also had. So the first uh, question that I have here from Claudia, did you find any issue with confidential information? We are a legal nonprofit, and our concern is the information that could or not be shared. Again, to Oscar's point, this information is aggregated. It's a large learning model, a large language model. It pulls these resources in. Do not consider the information that you sent it to be secured. It could be securely stored on their servers, but for all intensive purposes that, again, that information gets pulled into its training uh, classifiers and then starts to become part of how people are even potentially responded to. So again, Stay clear, ISO, HIPAA, um, any um, legal, other legal um, uh, parameters that you need to meet as an organization, do not feed it that exact copy. Um, try to query what it is that you're asking in, in a non-specific way. Uh, Jenny asks, will uh, we be covering me, this? Let ahead. me give an example of what not to do. <laughs> Imagine you have a database with uh, a thousand donors and the history of how much they have donated to the organization in the last five years, and also their emails, phones, and other personal information. You can ask ChatGPT, please, from this list that I am supplying, please give me the five, uh, the 50 persons that I have to contact with the most chances to donate in the short term. And maybe with the information in the database, ChatGPT can give you a recommendation. But if you submit the names, the emails, and, that, and all that uh, details, then ChatGPT can use that information to give another an answer. So just uh, delete or change the name of the donors, maybe just use uh, some kind of internal ID, like just a random number, uh, erase the emailing, erase addressing and that kind of information. If you really need to, to submit uh, confidential or personal data, then ChatGPT as, as it is, is not your tool. Maybe you need to use ChatGPT inside other uh, tools like uh, Azure. In Azure, you have the ChatGPT option and it will store just your information and will use the ChatGPT machine to give you answers. Yeah, that was a great point, uh, especially to the last part, Oscar, the Azure Open AI service. Um, I believe that can be um, leveraged as part of the Azure nonprofit grant. Um, because as a service, it does have an associated cost. Um, $3,500 may go a long way to helping you use uh, something like Azure OpenAI. Uh, so the next question that came in was from Jenny. Um, I'll be covering the risks of using ChatGPT. So I think we've touched on some of them. Um, 
but I really think that from this, I think we're kind of really getting our eyes open that we maybe need to have a couple of sessions, not just about the uh, image uh, AI tools. Uh, Dolly is actually one of my favorites, so I'll plug that. That's an also open AI. Um, but I think that we could probably even break this in um, based on the feedback that we have that's within the chat. So uh, Verlin, uh it asks, how would you upload data from an Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets file and have Jet GPT analyze the data? Um, Oscar, did you want to touch anything more on that? I think you kind of really hit it out. The big thing is de-anonymizing um, or anonymizing rather um, the important critical data. So this is not first name, last name, email. It's again, uh, a special identifier and then some other variables um, that um, you do need to have analyzed, but you need to stay clear of personally identifiable information. Yeah. Um, I just got off a Zoom call. Okay, Kirk, I just got off a Zoom call with a video of myself. What's up? So then another attendees using Windows 10 on a laptop with a camera above the screen. Uh, Kirk, I'm going to toss um, my uh, personal email back in chat. This is something that's going to take a little bit of troubleshooting, but I'd be happy to set up a one on one session with you um, to resolve that. Uh, Stan, do you know if Chat GPT has access to the info? and academic science journals to come up with answers. As, as far as that, I would think that maybe Oscar, you could speak to this a little bit more, someone else on the panel that, because I, I don't, you do academic research per se. Um, I think it's really about how you formulate the prompt. Like if you call out what the specific resource or resources are, and then you drill down what that data is, that it might be able to pull a response. Um, not so. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess um, ChatGPT has been trained with a lot of information that it's available uh, in the internet and public sources. Um, ChatGPT, with having said that, the training model maybe had access to the journals and other academic information, but maybe just the summaries, not necessarily the total research or, or the total content of the journal. Uh, but of course, there are journals that are open to the public and maybe it had access. So it could be limited uh, in the access to that uh, information, but it may use uh, part of it. That's a great point. So I think it's what you're really talking about when I remember vaguely. So we're talking about access to abstract, like publicly yeah. facing information. But to his to Oscar's point, paywalled information, I don't see how it's going to be able like journals you have to subscribe if to. If it's open in internet, it will. If it's not. Right. Yeah. And I think to that point, that also goes back to how you um, structure your prompts to chat GPT is maybe first asking what is like what are a list of open source journals that would provide you research that you're looking for this is about thinking about how you're having a conversation with somebody that maybe doesn't understand all of what you're trying to say to them so a lot of times it really comes down to it's call it phrasing call it prompts is because it's essentially that's what it is it's you're you're asking it something sometimes it's about restructuring the way and i saw this in the chat um is, is think about how you're asking, like what you're asking and how you're asking it. Is there a different way to do it? And to points from that were brought up in, uh, again within the conversation that we're having uh, within chat, it, it sometimes is just rephrasing that that really makes the difference. So Steve uh, had asked, what is the best way to leverage AI to most effectively grow a new nonprofit with a focus on raising awareness of our mission among the design and construction community? as well as identifying the most philanthropic focused architects and contractors. Did I could jump on this, Oscar, did you have any thoughts or anybody else they wanted to add first? I, so, I actually, oh yeah, no, go, go ahead, Kevin. I don't no, no, know. please, please. <laughs> so I just literally, just this second, I just took Steve, Steve, I just took your question and I just went to Chad GPT and it is still generating a response. But let me tell you the prompt, uh, how I did your question. So the prompt that I put in ChatGPT is what is the best way 
to leverage ChatGPT to most effectively grow a new nonprofit with a focus on raising awareness, everything you said in your question. And so it is generating a pretty lengthy response. Um, right now, the answer is consistent of content generation, research, email drafting, the list goes on. Uh, I am happy to share this with you whenever it decides to stop. It is on number eight and counting. Um, not sure if this is helpful for you, but Kevin, I don't know if you have anything you want to add there as well. Yeah. So again, I think this, that's awesome. Thanks for doing that. Um, is I, this speaks to the way that you're communicating to the engine. If you maybe change the syntax, I don't know if it, also accepts symbols. I'm assuming that it does, that they communicate like how you would, for example, like within Slack, if you use forward slash type remind me, that's a shortcut for creating a reminder. There's probably a syntax language that GPT has, but the point is, is when you're stating that, what my thing is, is what is the way to like make that the most succinct, like our focus? And what are the strings of words that you're using? So if you use like for example, Google search, there's it uses Boolean language. So, and, if, not, et cetera, right? So it's a way that you basically filter down, like what is the way that you could create that and filter ChatGPT's responses to where that its focus maybe resides in design and construction community. And then non at nonprofit becomes like the way that that's where it pulls the information and nonprofit is a way that it displays the information. So hopefully that kind of makes some sense. So uh, next we have uh, from Marilyn, uh, this is for you, Lashika. So okay. stay tight okay. here. Uh, well, question, here. what is the source of the meeting transcript, your raw notes, quote unquote, in a word document or something else? Oh, oh all of the above. So let me tell you, I love this question because I actually, I'm using um, an additional AI for my meeting notes. Um, so I have found a tool called Fathom for Zoom. It's F-A-T-H-O-M. I'll put it in the chat in just a second. It's a free tool. It's integrated with Zoom. And um, I personally like the transcript feature there um, better than um, the transcript feature within Zoom. Um, but other people, you know, you may work differently and that's perfectly fine. So to answer your question, Marilyn, I am taking transcript mainly from my Fathom notes. Uh, but you can you can use the same thing though with um, Zoom transcript, and some folks may even be using Otter. Um, but you can use uh, any any tool will work. Just copy and paste. But also just remember, Marilyn, and anyone else who wants to use it this way, keep please be mindful that it is a character limit. So if you're looking at a two-hour meeting, just know that that may have to be broken up into two separate uh, prompts or responses that you put into ChatGPT. So I hope that's helpful. Thanks, Lashika. Um, so from uh, Dana or Dana, uh, why is ChatGPT telling me I've exceeded my limit? Is there a free unlimited option for us nonprofits? I really was hoping somebody would put this out here. Um, OpenAI, if you're listening, please, please, please reach out to us because we would love to have this as a service that nonprofits could access at the unlimited capability without having to spend $20. I think it is a month. I don't remember, Lashika. I think that's what it is. I It's called Chat GTP, GPT Plus. Um, so yes, there's a limitation um, on the number of queries and the speed with which you access it. It I don't want to get too technical, but imagine like you get like like a, a like a nice newer sedan versus a Ferrari. Like the the nice sedan will definitely get you there. It's comfortable. That's what the free version is. The Ferrari version is Chat GPT Plus. Um, again, please, if you're listening, um, I think Sam and Company at OpenAI, we'd 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 love we'd love to connect with you guys. Um, from Isaac, how can chat GPT be utilized for grant writing? And I know that we've spoken a little bit to that, but if there was anything else that anybody, because this is not my purview, uh, feel free to jump in. So um, for for the grants process, um, especially uh, for data mining, 
remember, the first thing, you may need a lot of data. If you just have a list of 100 potential donors and a couple uh, columns with information, it won't be enough to create some kind of prediction. But if you have information from the last, maybe the last five years, uh, the system can help you in make some prediction. And you can submit the part of the database, maybe the, where the important data is, and you may need to ask uh, questions like, get me a list of the most important donors in my list. So it can filter and give you the specific list. Give me the ones that, not, that haven't donated in the last six months, and maybe it can give you the list. If you have information, for example, um, around the email marketing uh, of what kind of topics your donors like, maybe you can ask that kind of thing. So it may depend on the information you have and then the question of what you would like to, to ask. Uh, also, uh, I would like to add a, a, a general comment that is start looking how the different tools we use every day are using AI or are introducing AI. Like someone said, Google Workspace, it's introducing Barth on the, on the way we use Google Workspace. Microsoft 365 has announced Copilot, has announced Copilot that will make the transcripts, will make you the summaries, will put you in one note. Uh, and it's very possible that this Copilot will be able to propose answers for your different em daily email. So start aware of what, how they are happening. And also, if, the, if there is not a specific AI tool like ChatGPT uh, or DALI for the images that has been created or is not solving what you need, remember that the cloud platforms like AWS, Azure also have uh, some uh, AI features for developers, for uh, data scientists that could use to create your own model based in your own data. Great, thank you. Um, we're about five minutes out from the hour, so I want to keep this to maybe two more questions, maybe three if we have the time. So I'll start with Claudia because I'm not sure about this. Um, can chat GPT summarize video info? My initial thought is, is that if a video has a transcript, that's yes. Like summarizing the video off of images, I don't think that's what the model is built for. Um, I would think that would need an image modeling platform like Dolly or um, I'm trying to remember some of the other ones, Lambda maybe, um, but I, I don't think so. Oscar or anybody, uh, have they tried to summarize videos? Just a transcript. I've done just transcripts. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I thought. But I, I'm going to deep dive a little bit more into that because that is interesting. Um, an interesting question. Uh, Katie, can you share ideas of using chat GPT for Excel? I was able to get a very basic bar graph. And when I tried to have it compare data, it didn't work. Um, Felipe, you said that you had used it for um, for Excel work. I use Excel Formula Bot. For, uh, if anyone's not heard of that, I would recommend taking a look at that too. So, yeah, it works well with the Excel formulas. I think uh, I think I've been looking at. Uh, I emailed myself a little video that I found, but I think that there's an add-on add-on for ChatGPT for Excel formulas. Okay. Um. Okay, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna be a little biased here, so I'm gonna grab a question from another Kevin. Knowing that chat GPT is not always accurate, how do you deal with uncertainty? Wouldn't it be that you must know enough about the subject to know what is accurate and what is not? How do we trust the answers we ask if we are not knowledgeable on the subject? Have seen this happen when asking, for example, a biography on a person that was entirely false. That's a great question and point. Chat GPT is not the end all be all. It is a it is a, a model based on an engine that is based on information that may or may not be accurate. Um, I'll speak to this really quickly. Technically, um, I am a user of PowerShell. Um, 
PowerShell, um, it's like 50-50. Um, I have to rewrite scripts probably half the time. Yes, to your point, you have to know and understand some of the basic fundamentals of it. I found it's a little bit better for JavaScript, Python, Rust, and some other more popular languages. But have you guys seen that um, as far as subject matter related, if you're looking for general information or if you see perhaps bias in regards, have you come across that where um, it's just you're looking at it and you know at a fundamental level that this is not accurate? I don't know, Lashika, have you come across that, Oscar, Felipe? No, not not really. I'm just trying to think about um, like when I have, especially around my work around equity, inclusion, diversity, and culture, um, it's it really has been pretty supportive. I haven't come across an instance yet where I feel like, wait, <laughs> let, let's rethink this or something is wrong or doesn't feel right. It really has been pretty good about um, well, in terms of email communications, being able to help me draft emails that, um, you know, are empathetic in tone and, uh, you know, remo removing any any biased language. So I'm not really sure, Felipe or Oscar, if you have any instances there. Yeah, you know, uh, that's why I use it as a copy editor, uh, because I, I'm knowledgeable of what I uh, what I have yeah. and that it just maybe makes the language better. It's not really changing the, you know, the, the context of it. So I think being an expert would be great. Uh, I know we're running out of time, but one of the things I wanted to mention is if you have like a, you know, strategic plan, for example, or a marketing plan, you know, you can upload it and say, you know, you are a, you know, strategy consultant, you know, analyze this plan and, you know, what what would you change differently? Uh, and it, at least it's directional, so don't take it at face value, but there might be some things that you didn't uh, consider, uh, and now you can dig a little bit deeper on your own, do your due diligence, and so it's a, it's a back to kind of copy editing. It can also kind of serve as like a strategy consultant if you upload it and say, I'm this type of an organization, and here is my you know strategic plan, uh, and you know here are the things. Uh, I would maybe not mention your name because back to privacy, uh, and maybe not upload uh, anything they had, you know, like the... Uh, the, the kernel of your strategy, but overall, like a marketing strategy, you know, it's like, I'm doing social media, I'm doing this and that, you know, what else can I do? And it might come up with some things that you haven't considered. Okay, great. Yeah, we're just at the hour. I know there's, looks like there's 17, 18 questions that are still out in the wild, uh, so to speak. I've put in my email address, our team's email address. Please reach out to us. That's what we're, we're, we exist primarily for is to be able to answer these questions from both a strategy and a technology end. Um, I definitely would encourage you to, to take advantage of that. It's no cost, uh, but your time, and we could probably knock out most, if not all of what your um, remaining questions are. Uh, so I wanted to come over, uh, go over a couple of quick resources here. Um, if you haven't heard about Quad, you should probably know about it um, and take a look at it. Um, a lot of these conversations that we're having are happening there at a much deeper level. Um, so highly recommend taking a look at that. Um, our Digital Transformation Forum, our Digital Skills Center and training courses. If we don't have AI courses, I'm at a feeling that I'm gonna have a conversation with our courses team to start getting maybe something going on that. And then this is part of the monthly virtual office hour session that. We're working in conjunction between customer success and our webinar team. Uh, we do this once a month. Um, really, we're trying to build these sessions around you and what you're saying. Um, our next event is uh, scheduled uh, for Thursday, June 15th. Um, the topic is TBD. Um, we're kind of working on possibly fitting in something around data. But again, th this feedback from this has been so tremendous. I feel like <laughs> it's almost worth carrying over an, an additional portion of this conversation uh, to next month. So with that, uh, and on behalf of all the panelists, I thank you so much for spending your afternoon, your morning with us.